Hi there and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Munter Mule Overhand, which is a few hitches combined and backed up with a knot. And the reason that this three-part combination, the Munter Hitch, the Mule Hitch, and the Overhand Knot are so useful is it creates a load releasable system where when the load is released, you have a friction hitch, that's the Munter Hitch, in place in order to control the descent or the transfer of the load onto a new system. So this is a really important skill to master for a lot of different rescue systems from uh, complex crevasse rescue systems to self-rescue systems in uh, steep environments, um, in multi-pitch rescue, um, all kinds of situations. And it's just handy to know on your own too, even for things like aid climbing if you're trying to solve some problems. So the first situation we're gonna look at where you could use a Munter Mule overhand would be on an anchor. So here we have just an equalized bolt anchor right on my door. Um, and uh, one note is this system works much better when you have an HMS carabiner. That's a pear-shaped carabiner that's specifically designed for use with the Munter Hitch. It also works best when you build the Munter Hitch in such a way that the load strand is coming out through the tongue of the hitch. So I'll show you what that means. You can also take a look at our video on the Munter Hitch for a more in-depth look at the Munter Hitch itself. So I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly so you'll have that video as a reference. First thing I'm gonna do with my rope is identify the load strand. So in this case, the load strand is this part of the rope that you can see that's under tension. And I'm gonna build my hitch, my Munter Hitch, by folding the standing end, that's the non-load strand here, behind the load strand. So I folded that behind and then I can raise it to the front, and that would be an air munter. So I'm building the munter in the air, not on the carabiner. That would be one acceptable way to build it. I find a slightly more efficient way to build the munter hitch for rescue is to build the first half of the air munter. So load strand, standing end. I fold the standing end behind the load strand, and then I'm gonna clip that into the carabiner with the load strand on top relative to the spine of the carabiner. So I'll call this the bottom. This is the spine and the gate is the top. So I clip that in so that the load strand is on top. And now I'm going to clip in my brake strand after having clipped in that original bend. So one more time, I make a bend in the rope I clip that in to my carabiner, like so, and then I just loop that in just like that. Before I loop that second part in, what I want to do is I want to pull some tension so it gets all of the slack out from the load strand, and then pop that in right there, okay, and lock that down. And as you can see here, this part of the hitch is called the tongue of the hitch, and the load strand is coming out from the tongue. That's also called the lowering position for the munter hitch. So now I've built my munter hitch. If there was any slack left in the load strand, you can follow the load strand back through the hitch and on the side of the carabiner where the load strand makes the bend and comes out of that carabiner, you can simply pull down and then pull the brake strand down and that prevents the hitch from flipping over. This is what the hitch flipping over would look like. Okay, and now the hitch is in the wrong position. You can see the brake strand is coming out the tongue rather than the load strand, okay? So here we go. We've got tension in the load strand. It's coming out from the tongue of the hitch. Now I'm gonna build my mule hitch. To build the mule hitch, identify the brake strand. I'm gonna pass the brake strand underneath the load strand, like so. And after I pass it underneath the load strand, I'm going to make a loop of rope. In order to make that loop, I'm gonna bend the brake strand back toward the carabiner so that the brake strand is on the outside away from the hitch. So one more time, I cross it underneath the load strand, I make a bend so the brake strand is on the outside. If it was on the inside, it would look like this and that would trap the brake strand between the load strand and the part of the brake strand that I grab with my hand. Okay, so underneath on the outside, and then through that loop that was created, I'm going to pass a bite of rope 
from the brake strand. Also notice that this loop right here, the cross on that loop is butted right up against the tongue of the munter hitch. That's going to keep this nice and tight to block the munter hitch off when I've completed this hitch. Okay, so now I pass a bite, simply a bend of rope through that hitch. Okay, so now I pass that through. To secure this and ensure that it's going to be blocking the munter hitch, what I want to do is press with my fingers in a circular shape on the loop that I created for the mule hitch, pushing it up and toward the munter hitch, and pulling up toward the anchor with the bite of rope that's passed through like so. Okay. If I, as I tighten this, I pull down and away, you can see that I've introduced some slack between the munter hitch and the mule hitch. So it's important that you pull up toward your anchor, toward the munter hitch, and pull up. One of these strands of this bite of rope will create tension. The other strand will introduce more rope to elongate this loop. I want to keep some tension up toward this munter hitch so it'll block. I can push this up with my fingers just to make sure. Pull down on the tension rope on that side to make sure it cinches up on the load strand well. And after I have one to one and a half feet of slack on my bite that has come out from this mule hitch, I want to use that slack to build an overhand knot around the load strand. So I'm going to take those two, wrap them around each other so they cross with the load strand coming out the center. And then I'm going to pass this loop through and cinch this overhand knot up so it butts up right against the mule hitch, keeping that nice and tidy, making sure that the overhand knot doesn't overlap the mule hitch. Yeah. So I pull that in. I'm pulling the right strand, then the left strand, then the right strand, and the left strand to get that nice and snugged in there. So now I have nice, tidy, munter, mule, overhand knot. And to cinch everything up, I'm simply going to push this up into the carabiner in there. Maybe I have half a centimeter of slack or so. So that's a pretty good, nice, tidy, munter mule overhand knot. Okay, the next part of this system that I'm going to introduce is another munter mule overhand using cordelette. And this is very common in rescue systems, almost exclusively in rescue systems. Uh, where you may need to transfer the load from one system to another system or from one device to another device. A lot of times you might need to get your ATC back so you can use it to repel or something similar. So I have some rescue cord here. The dimensions of this rescue cord, this is about a 20 foot piece of six millimeter Sterling brand nylon cord. It's very flexible. At six millimeters, this is an appropriate diameter of nylon cord to use in environments that don't have sharp edges like snow, but this diameter of cord not being a tech cord may not be appropriate for constructing anchors on rock where friction could play a factor in destroying uh, the integrity of my anchor. So therefore, there, in that environment, if I have the cord this skinny, it should probably be a tech cord. Obviously, I could also use seven millimeter cord and Sterling brand tends to have the best properties for building friction hitches, which is why I prefer it. So. And open that up and on the load strand I'm going to build a friction hitch. There's a lot of friction hitches I could choose from but when I have a long piece of material like this I find one of the most efficient friction hitches to use is a climb heist. So take a look at our friction hitches video to see how to build this. I'm going to make a climb heist with four wraps. One, two, three, and four wraps. I say four to five wraps is pretty good. Okay. And then I'm going to pass the tail through. Keep this tail nice and small. To keep it small, I'm going to back the hitch up just a tad. Okay. And then I'm going to reverse the direction of the hitch to make sure that the tail of the hitch here is not longer than the length of the hitch. Okay. So then I pull it that direction. And now we have a nice binding friction hitch there. And now I'm going to attach this to the anchor. I'm going to attach it up to the shelf of the anchor just for clarity so it doesn't interfere with everything going on down here. This is also helpful in a lot of rescue systems to keep some separation so things don't pitch up, pinch on each other. And now I'm gonna build my munter hitch the same way I did before. I'm gonna pass 
the brake strand underneath the load strand, clip it into my carabiner, pull so there's tension, and then drop that in, lock it down. And now I'm going to do my mule hitch the same way, pass it underneath, lock that off by pulling up, make sure I have enough slack, and then lock this off. Now with cord, where I have a defining end that's close by, I have two options for locking this hitch off. I can pull out enough slack to use an overhand as I did before, which I tend to do if this hitch is gonna be untended, I'm not gonna be near it, uh, where my hands aren't gonna be available to put a backup in for say uh, 30 seconds or more, I tend to just do the standard overhand knot and lock that off. But if it's going to be untended for a shorter amount of time, this transfer is gonna take place quickly, then I tend to keep that bite small and I'll simply open that up and take these tails and pass the tails through. Okay, and by passing the tail through like that, if this hitch were to start to fail, then it would start to move down on itself and it would pull tight onto the tails and jam itself up that way. I don't find that to be as secure in a lot of circumstances, but for a short period of holding, that's all you need, um, then that's typically what I'll do. Okay, so I'll lock this off here. I'll just use my overhand knot. Cinch that all up, push it back up toward the carabiner, make sure it's locked in. And the last thing I want to make sure to do is if this is what the load is going to be transferred on, I'm just going to push that down on the load strand as tight as possible. Obviously this isn't a secure anchor, so there's going to be some movement in it here, but I'll pull on my load strand at the same time as I push my friction hitch down until this is taking a majority of the load. And then when I open up my original Munter mule overhand on the climbing rope, the load will be transferred to the friction hitch. I'm not gonna get into any more rescue systems now, but this is a small component that you'll find used over and over and over again. And incidentally, this combination of a rope grab plus a piece of extension with a load releasable system is oftentimes called a technical ledge. So this is one way that you might build that.